Why does the MCU consistently refuse to use practical effects in favor of CGI when not only are practical effects usually cheaper, but also could potentially look much, much better? Of course, the MCU has many moments that require CGI, as many of the fantasy aspects require it to go into space or require a character to transform into a giant green monster. And those look great most of the time. However, the CGI becomes excruciatingly noticeable when all Spider-Man is doing is standing or running. There, there are many videos bashing the MCU's bad CGI. However, in this video, I want to focus on moments in other films, specifically the other Spider-Man films, that use the full extent of practical effects, not only saving the studio money, but arguably making it look better too. When working on For Love and Thunder, Christian Bale called the use of the blue screen monotony. In an interview with MovieWeb, Christian Bale said, That's the first time I've done that. I mean, the definition of it is monotony. You've got good people. You've got other actors who are far more experienced at it than me. You can differentiate one day from the next? No, absolutely not. You have no idea what to do. I could even differentiate one stage from the next. They kept saying, you're on stage 3. Well, it's like, which one is that? The blue one. Although CGI is consistently used by movie developers today, the art of practical effects is still used in today's age in cinema. Directors such as Christopher Nolan are famous for prioritizing the use of practical effects over special effects. In Christopher Nolan's film Tenet, there's an airplane crash scene. They actually crashed a real life airplane instead of using CGI. This is again because it was actually cheaper than CGI and because it looks better. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man trilogy and Andrew Garfield's The Amazing Spider-Man duology both skillfully blend the use of CGI and practical effects both in their unique way, arguably much better than Tom Holland's Spider-Man trilogy. Quick reminder, I am not judging these films based on acting, screenplay, directing, etc., but rather specifically viewing its use of practical effects, or lack thereof. Sam Raimi is a master at perfectly balancing CGI with the use of practical effects, as seen in the Spider-Man trilogy. This is no big discovery. Raimi loves using practical effects every chance he gets, even in big action sequences. His style is famous for quickly switching between CGI and practical effects, as seen in this scene in Spider-Man 2 when fighting Doc Ock, or in this scene when having his, I guess now coined, web block. Don't you see how beautifully and quickly the CGI and practical effects naturally switch, which arguably adds more realism in the film? Raimi gets a lot of praise and credit for his blend of CGI and practical effects. However, the same can't be said for Mark Webb and the Amazing Spider-Man duology, even though I believe it's well deserved. Unlike the original Spider-Man's practice of switching between CGI and practical effects within the same scene, the Amazing Spider-Man and its sequel have a different, equally as impressive approach. Entire scenes are practical, while other scenes are entirely CGI. It's incredibly impressive. In the earlier part of the movie, when Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man is getting used to his powers, he swings under this above ground train. This is completely 100% practical. A man was in there with wires attached to him swinging around. Scenes like this could have been completely in CGI. However, the decision was made to not have it like that. This ultimately takes a load off the VFX team and gives them an opportunity to work and dedicate their time on other specific scenes. And it shows. The fight scene in Peter's school with the lizard is a complete contrast with the scene mentioned earlier. This scene is completely CGI and it looks absolutely gorgeous. In fact, this is where the Amazing Spider-Man duology shines in. It's gorgeous CGI. I believe the main reason they were able to obtain these gorgeous CGI shots are because they focused on what they wanted to make CGI and did not overload the VFX scene with unnecessary CGI of Spider-Man just standing. The MCU, however, overall does not share these same practices. It sometimes feels like they prioritize CGI over other filmmaking techniques. Captain America's Civil War was Spider-Man's debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And in many scenes, he looks awful. In the big airport scene, all he's doing is running towards Team Cap. Yet, the filmmakers decided to use CGI instead of having Tom Holland in his suit. Why? Spider-Man isn't jumping around or swinging around yet. All he's doing is running. It's frustrating because when Spider-Man is finally knocked out of battle with his mask slightly off is when they decide to finally put Tom Holland in his practical suit and he looks fantastic in it. This is an issue that continues throughout Tom Holland's entire Spider-Man trilogy with wonky CGI due to their unfocused decision to rely on CGI as the default. Albeit, I do think No Way Home slightly improved with this issue using practical effects more than the two previous films. However, it still had its issues. It doesn't help that Tom Holland's suit simply does not look good in CGI because of its skin tight design, devoid of creases and natural imperfections that the two other actors' suits had, especially Andrew Garfield's suit. It has been said time and time again how beautiful Andrew's suit looks in the opening scene of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 because of its creases and natural imperfections, which absolutely is the truth. Yet, the same suit looked weird in Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man's introductory scene in No Way Home when he decided to make the suit CGI for some reason. 
but it's alright I guess because his suit is practical for the rest of the scene. Nevertheless, it sticks out. I would also like to state that Tom Holland's Iron Spider suit is the ugliest Spider-Man suit to date in my opinion. Every time I see that suit, it looks so CGI to me. It like, and that's already the case with Spider-Man's other, Tom Holland's Spider-Man's other suits, yet this one really sticks out like a sore thumb. I was so happy when Doc Ock finally destroyed that suit. Also, I am aware that in No Way Home, they use CGI masks a lot of the time when being removed or put back on because Spider-Man's mask is actually physically impossible to shape without a shell under it. However, this hasn't stopped filmmakers in the past in coming up with clever solutions that don't rely on CGI, whether that be specifically placed cuts or whatever. An argument that may be presented to defend Tom Holland's trilogy's overuse and obsession of CGI is the fact that unlike the other two Spider-Man, Spider-Men? is that Tom Holland's Spider-Man has movable eyes that require CGI. Sure, the eyes may require CGI, but that doesn't mean the entire suit needs to be CGI. Deadpool is another comic book character that has movable eyes, yet his suit looks amazing. This has to do with the fact that Deadpool's suit is filled with creases and imperfections, but also has to do with the fact that when doing practical stunts, the filmmakers have decided to only CGI his eyes rather than his suit entirely. And similarly to the Spider-Man trilogy and the Amazing Spider-Man duology, Deadpool switches between CGI and practical effects either frequently or by having longer shots rely on either method. So if there are other cheaper methods that make the overall look of the film more appealing, why does the MCU use the bad CGI and rely on it so much? According to an article by Screen Rant, the reason may be because of the indecisiveness of the studio. According to a report from Gizmodo, the erratic direction of Marvel movies leads to erratic results. That's why you see incredibly sharp and realistic VFX work in one scene, and then two minutes later, the VFX work looks choppy and rushed. Because in a lot of cases, it is. All of the VFX studios that Marvel hires are capable of producing incredible work, but very few are given the opportunity to do so. It's very unfortunate that this is the case. The MCU as a whole has been kind of choking a bit throughout the entirety of Phase 4. This could be attributed to their lack of direction when it comes to filmmaking, including the use of practical effects slash CGI. Ultimately, studios shouldn't rely on last minute CGI work done by their VFX teams. It overworks them and it doesn't present the best results in the end. Going back to filmmaking roots and using practical effects would be in the MCU's best interest, of course, when possible. It would allow the VFX team to refocus their efforts and give them time to perfect scenes that deserve the attention from them. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy and Mark Webb's The Amazing Spider-Man duology beautifully showcase this practice. It would be amazing to see Tom Holland's Spider-Man get the treatment that his predecessors got, especially now that he has a beautiful homemade suit. So, Kevin Feige, John Watts, any future director out there that is going to make the next trilogy of Spider-Man movies, just let the guy wear the suit whenever he can. That is all what we ask for.